Hey guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits, and today I'm going to show you how you can get that out of focus, blurry, shallow depth of field look using Lightroom. Let's do it. All right, so first things first, you can actually download this image right now if you head to the description link below, download the raw file, and come back to the video, and we'll do it together. All right? Okay, perfect. So, now that you've paused the video, downloaded that raw practice file, we can go through this image together. How are we going to make it out of focus? And for those of you who are wondering, how do I get this out of focus in my camera? How do I get that shallow depth of field, blurry background? Well, it all comes down to your camera and your lens. Basically, what it comes down to is this. If your lens is fast, f1.2, f1.4, f1.8, the lower that number is, the shallower your depth of field is going to be. If the lens is zoomed in, a 85 mil, versus a 35 mil, the higher the zoom, the more shallow your depth of field is going to be, the more out of focus your background becomes. The same goes with your camera and its sensor size. A full frame camera with a very large sensor is going to have a very shallow depth of field, whereas a smaller sensor size like that in your cell phone is going to be much harder to replicate that look. That's why using a cell phone, everything seems to be in focus, both because it's a wide angle lens and because they have very small sensors that typically don't have that fast of apertures. But let's say that you're using a wide angle lens, everything is in focus, can we still get that shallow depth of field look in Lightroom? Well, yes we can. Let me show you. We're going to start by going to our radial filters. I'm going to hold option and hit reset, make a brand new radial filter. Take our clarity down by about minus 20. Dehaze down just a little bit. And sharpness all the way down, okay? Now what I'm going to do is drag this radial filter out and move it over top of our skateboarder. Now if yours is the other way around, if it is like this, instead of like this, all you have to do is press the apostrophe sign or the uh, quote mark symbol on your keyboard and that'll invert the mask. And I've got this handy red filter showing me where the image is being affected by pressing O. You can toggle that on and off, okay? So I'm pressing O. That shows me exactly what's being affected. I'm going to just widen this mask and take our feather down just a little bit. And the feather is how it's blending into the rest of the image. Take that down just a little so that my skateboarder guy is not being affected and neither is his skateboard. So we'll lengthen this a little bit. Perfect, just like that. All right, let's toggle that off. And you can already see that these parts of the image are being softened considerably. Things are looking a little more out of focus. That's great, but it looks really unnatural and weird because the rest of the image in behind skateboarder guy and the parts of the image that aren't being affected still are in focus. How do we fix that? Easy. We head up to our brush and we hit brush. This is still inside the radial filter, this particular one we've done, but by hitting the brush tab, we can actually brush in the areas of the image that we still want affected inside of this radial filter. So I'm just going to take my brush and paint in here. Right now I've got my softening, my feather set all the way up. I can take it down a little bit and my flow is up at 100 because I'm just doing a very quick mask up for you guys so that it doesn't take too long. So once I've got kind of the gist of it using a bigger brush, I'm going to zoom in and do the detail work. Perfect, so that's kind of good. Using a bigger brush just to make sure I've got everything on the borders covered. And then we're gonna zoom in by hitting this one-to-one -one tab in the navigator. And I can drag this little box over to wherever I need it to go. And just paint in like this. Now, if you've got something with hard images like his leg, I'm going to press Command Z, undo that brush stroke. I can actually go to the Auto Mask feature in Lightroom, and it'll probably detect that edge. See how it's not going over? It's just painting inside that? Very handy. So I'm going to use that Auto Mask feature here. Sometimes it works, sometimes it is a little buggy. So you just have to watch it and make sure that you don't accidentally leave it on. But in a situation like this where we've got a really good line of contrast like his leg, oh, see it picked up his arm, didn't work properly there. We can just paint like that and save ourselves some time. So I'm going to fast forward a little until I've got this kind of finessed and where we like it and then we'll continue. You can pause the video or skip ahead and see the rest of the tutorial. So I have gone through and I've painted pretty much the entire image where I need it to be. Now you can see in these bushes right here, the auto mask feature wasn't working perfectly so I'm just going to go back to my brush. Make sure auto mask is off and just paint on him. Perfect, and I can see a little spot around his eyes that still isn't quite done, but that's really detailed. So I'm gonna take my flow down and I'm just going to kind of fade it in there. The nice part is this image is wide enough that we are gonna be okay if we have it not 
perfectly masked out. All right, so now we got that in place. Let's get rid of our red filter by pressing O. Perfect, and we can see that already the image looks very out of focus compared to our before right here. Great, so how do we take this a step further? Great question. First things first, I'm going to click on this and right click, duplicate, okay? That's going to duplicate the radial filter that I've just created. And this time, because now our image is getting a little weird, I'm going to take my clarity and reset it, my dehaze, reset it by hitting um, my mouse button twice. Just double clicking will reset any tab back to its standard. And then I'm gonna leave my sharpness at minus 100. And I'm going to take my exposure down just a little to separate him from the background a little more because our eyes are naturally drawn to the brightest part of the image, okay? So our skateboarder guy, if he's the brightest part of the image, he's going to stand out like crazy. Obviously, this looks ridiculous, although <laughs> ironically, it's a good method to be able to see which area of your image is not being affected. Clearly, I've missed some spots around his shoe. Um, but if we drop it by, you know, let's say 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a stop, minus 0 0.3, we'll get a nice separation without it being too crazy. So here's before. And here's after, before, and after. Now, obviously, that looks maybe a little bit too intense for you. You can dial this effect in. You can go crazy and just, you know, duplicate this three or four times, or you can keep it a little bit more subtle like that. I like to make it a little more subtle. You want it to look natural in your image, not like it was super edited. Um, but that's how you add that blurry, out-of-focus look inside of Lightroom. Again, if you want to try this for yourself, make sure to download the raw image, and you can walk through this tutorial again or just do it on your own time. I hope this was helpful for you. Make sure to like and subscribe if it was. Leave me a comment, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, take care.